Okay, it's Friday, December 8th, and it's time for me to uh, head home. <laughs> so, uh, leaving the Smith and Martin Apache uh, Boulevard Transit Station, Metro Transit Station, and cul-de-sac is in the background there. And I'm gonna find my way uh, to the airport, uh, taking a different route than the way that I found my way here. So, let's go do it. So one of the reasons why I am taking this route is I learned last night that cul-de-sac is going to be working with the city uh, to try to uh, transform this into a bicycle friendly route. Uh, Smith is what we're on right now and it takes you directly to the Tempe Marketplace, which is a huge shopping center area. And also, more importantly, from an active town's perspective, it's also where you are able to uh, connect with the Rio Salado Trail and the, uh, you know, really the beautiful, beautiful environment where the river is uh, down in the basin area there. So we're gonna go check that out. And I did walk this route earlier today and uh, starts out like this a little bit of a narrow uh, sort of residential area very quickly it will transition into more of an industrial uh, sort of area and you'll start to see the street get a little wider you can see it gets wider by about six to eight feet right here when I walked it this morning uh, between oh, basically 8 and 9 a.m. There were really hardly any cars whatsoever. Uh, really not that many cars now either. So could definitely be a good candidate for a bicycle boulevard, perhaps during the uh, narrower segments. And then I think that a uh, protected, a parking protected infrastructure installation facility is planned for the wider segments like we're on now. And we are approaching University Drive, which obviously, or maybe not obviously, but does connect to Arizona State University, I believe, which is off to our left. We actually are heading north right now, away from cul-de-sac. So you see that there really is just plenty of space for redefining how this streetscape is laid out. And again, we're at uh, Smith Road and University Drive. This is a massive strode that really could do with some reduction in size just really quite massive. I really haven't seen enough traffic here in the Tempe area to justify any of these overly wide streets. But then again, that's not saying anything new. That's pretty standard for more, most North American cities. And even when you do see the numbers that justify the size, it's just a matter of induced demand of you build that capacity and people will fill it up if it's convenient to drive. Which, by the way, we can do and we can say about cycling infrastructure too. If you build it, they will come so long as you also have the supporting software policies, engagement activities, that help support and activate and engage people for, you know, really activating the hardware that you do build, the infrastructure you build. Again, here's that industrial area that I was talking about. Up ahead, you'll start to see some palm trees and some nicer landscaping features 
that's the beginning of the Tempe marketplace. And again, as you can tell, not that many cars traveling through this area. It is obviously a car-centric design. A lot of businesses that are car-oriented. But in the, in the end, I think this would make a wonderful protected cycling route. And now we're at the intersection here of Rio Salado and the Tempe Marketplace. And again, this is another one of those massive strodes here at uh, Rio Salado Parkway. It could definitely stand some lane reductions. In we go. Prepare yourself to see a massive sea of parking. For those of us in North America, nothing new. This morning when I walked through here, there were pretty much nobody here. Very few cars parked in the parking lot. Behind this green fence here is a huge vacant lot. So it looks like more development coming soon. We do see a mixture of businesses over in this direction as well as apartments. Not sure if any of these are townhomes or not, but uh, you definitely see a combination of residential and businesses. So this is the mall. So big, huge sea of parking, as we would expect to see here in North America. And uh, we are gonna go behind all of these businesses and connect with the Rio Salado Trail that follows the river. And I don't know for sure that following this car will get us to our desired destination, but we're gonna give it a try. I know that there's a huge parking lot that I have to get through to get to the trail. So I think this is it. Off in the distance there, you can see that we do have an expressway of some sort, a freeway. Not sure if it is an actual interstate freeway, but uh, it is busy. And right here, where that fence is, sort of the beige colored fence, is the trail. And they have provided a very convenient ramp to get us from the parking lot here up onto the trail. This morning when I was down here, I was able to see a handful of people running and biking along the trail. And here is that ramp. As you can tell, it looks like it has been installed after the fact, relatively recently. I don't know how old this facility is, this trail. It seems pretty new. It has a, a newness factor to it. I'll have to look it up and see uh, how many years it has been in place. But as you can tell, it is a much more comfortable environment to be able to ride on compared to my alternatives, which would, would have been Apache Boulevard which is what I rode to cul-de-sac on. That wasn't fun. Or University Drive. Also, not very desirable, not very fun. 
you know, riding around on a strode is possible, but it's not an all ages and abilities facility, certainly like this is. One of the things that I like to look for when I'm on a trail like this, a multi-use trail, is the number of connections to meaningful destinations. So we saw that retrofit of a ramp getting us up to here. You'll see up here in a moment a pedestrian crossing going down, or actually we just passed one um, a little while ago, and then this is another ramp. So. The pedestrian connectivity was a stair environment and then this is another ramp so people can use their micro mobility devices their bikes whatever skateboards to get from the parking lot over there to the trail all right now, I am actually going to pause here and just uh, verify my directions so that I don't miss my turn to be able to get to the canal so that I can connect to the airport. I'll be right back with you. Okay, got it all figured out. Found a route that will keep me on this pathway for as long as possible. Make it uh, across the uh, the body of water which turns into the lake and we are able to uh, connect up with the canal pretty seamlessly or at least that's the plan we shall see how seamless it really is <laughs> but as you can tell this is a much more pleasant way to get through that environment we would have been over there on either of the strodes take your pick rio salado university drive or apache boulevard this is much nicer you'll notice that the trail is much narrower here in this segment uh, we don't have the additional two to three feet on either side for people walking to be utilizing looks like this was a pretty narrow little berm which is part of what I believe has been turned into Tempe Town Lake we do see the lighting which is nice to have and we do hear the constant jet engines accelerating and climbing up in elevation you see a jet right there again that's our destination we're heading to the airport we're about six miles away from the airport at this particular location uh, really given the fact that this is such a nice day really a nice three days that I've been here it's uh, it would really be a shame to have to uh, take transit even though that would be just fine it's nice being able to ride we see some folks jogging in the area see some folks fishing down on the lake right there we also see in the distance off to the left or really straight ahead for us at this moment sun devil stadium on the university campus the arizona state university campus their mascot is the sun devils hence sun devil stadium and you can see some folks sort of riding along the lakefront Looks like we have some trail side residential development happening here. Really impressive size of development. High rise. I guess we could call that a high rise. It's a high rise to me anyways.
again much more expensive in terms of being able to create this type of housing infrastructure but yeah talk about having easy access to the trail and pathway connectivity to the city and the lake you see a rower out there getting some practice in and then also a person in a canoe paddling very nice or is that a kayak i don't know i'm not up to speed on all my watercraft these days nice to be out there on the water though another jet going overhead and you can see in the distance there another strode making its way over the lake I believe we've routed ourselves over the lake via a bike and pedestrian bridge or at least that's what I'm hoping we shall see that was the plan anyways as we get closer to the stadium where the Sun Devils play you can see it's one of the more beautiful locations it's nestled in nestled in nicely between these little buttes here and uh, it's really a beautiful beautiful setting to play football play a game okay i think i need to actually make my way down to the waterfront now instead of follow the yellow brick road it's follow the yellow line here we go There's something about just being down at water level too that is so nice. I mean, being elevated looking down was cool and all, but being closer to the water, being closer to the eye level, yeah, it's just really, really nice. Very comfortable. You can also get a sense as to the orientation of some of the other commercial buildings as well as some of the other residential buildings across the way on the other side of the lake. Again, a wonderful activity asset for everyone working and living in the area. It looks like this might be offices for Honor Health.
Well, I am really glad that the staff at Cul-de-Sac really encouraged me to explore and take this route back to the airport. A side-by-side -side comparison with the route that I took, hands down, this is much more pleasant. again emphasizes the value that local knowledge brings to the table when you're looking at creating a routing system that takes into consideration the safest, most enjoyable, most pleasurable route to take. I would say that this qualifies on each of those accounts. I also want to show you the uh, really cool detail along the uh, pathway there in the concrete. Those were little fish imprints or designs. Very cool. It's a little rough on the bike, but that's okay. I don't need to be going that fast, and I'm not. So it's not a big deal. And in fact, this is a shared use, relatively narrow pathway. So it's an okay traffic calming mechanism. Again, you see more offices off to the left. We see even more bike and pedestrian activity. Again, this is midday on Friday, December 8th. It'll be interesting to see what this is like on beautiful Saturday or even later this evening after work. And people come down from the offices and come out to get some fresh air, maybe meet up with some friends, and then folks that live in some of the uh, residential in the area here too. Ditto. The temperature is super comfortable at this moment. You see the runners are in shorts and short sleeves. Some of the riders are in long sleeves. I myself, I'm in shorts and a short sleeve button down shirt. So I'm dressed for my destination again, which is the airport. I might actually throw some pants on when I get to the airport. Austin is a little chilly these days and I'll be arriving after 9 p.m. So I might find it desirable to have pants on when I get off. Looks like there's a rental place for some of the four-wheeled contraptions. It's also a rental place if you want to go for a ride in either a swan, a duck, or a sea serpent, lake serpent. That'd be fun. <laughs> oh, here's a little pathway here. I think we're going to take the next one, though. This is another great lesson for cities is multiple bridges across your bodies of water, rivers, and lakes. The reason for that is it gives more flexibility for reaching meaningful destinations as well as being able to create a variety of different routes of differing distances. 
which makes it more accessible for a larger number of people. Again, the spirit of all ages and abilities. I don't know if you can see all the way over there in the distance, people walking and biking on the uh, path on the other side of the lake. We will obviously be heading in that direction. I say obviously because I've mentioned it a couple of times already. Once we get on this bridge, I'm going to scan over to the left so you can see the skyline of Phoenix and get some bearing as to how far away the big city is. Hint, it's not very far away. Okay, this is our bridge. Very nicely done. I love the way this structure creates an A as you go under here on the braces. I promised I would scan to the left so you could see in the distance the big city of Phoenix. You can also see the tower for the airport over there. And if we scan over to the right, we look back on Tempe and look back on Tempe Town Lake. You see those burns there preventing anybody on watercraft getting close to the spillway over here. All right, we've made it to the other side. And we're going to take the north bank Path. We're going to take a left here. And we'll be on this for about three quarters of a mile, just shy of a mile. And you can see there's not much in the way of water on this side. <laughs> it's pretty bone dry. The uh, Sonoran Desert area does get heavy rain from time to time during what they call the monsoon season. And so when you look at these wide expanses of the river cuts, it's because the raging water that does happen during those heavy rains, during the monsoon. You also bring a lot of life to the area. That water, you can see a little bit of trickle of water down there. And so you see some greenery, lots of reeds. And when it rains in the desert too, you'll just see an explosion of colors with the cactus blooming the other desert plants blooming. It's really magical to see, especially if it's during a period of drought when uh, there's been little to no rain. There's really the quite an impressive explosion of color. Not today though. Not the season see our relative position to the freeway over here. It's surprisingly quiet. I don't know exactly why. There's not too much in the way of sound barrier between us. We're not right on it. So, I don't know. It's just nice 
whenever you can be a little bit removed from automobile infrastructure. Really the sound of cars moving fast. It's quite disturbing. And again, just as we saw on the ride to cul-de-sac on the canal path, homelessness is an issue. So, oftentimes it's hidden from sight and sometimes it uh, is quite visible. tell by the relative closeness of the aircraft that are taking off right now that we're getting closer to the airport. on this monster for a little bit. There's that freeway that we saw earlier. Different view of it. We're gonna be going straight across this uh, little frontage road area here. Look what we see down there. That's our path that we took last time. This is actually the section where our path sort of disappeared and we took the route that that person is riding their e-bike on. So we know where we are. We're gonna drop down. We're going to drop down onto Grand Way, head down towards that suite of buildings here at uh, Papago Park Center. And if you watch the, uh, the first leg of this video on the ride to cul-de-sac, it's where the uh, little Roosevelt installation water feature was located. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna just kind of head edge over. Oh, here's our little grand way, pathway. Nicely done. Not sure why the construction fencing is up right now. But uh, we're here, very nice. And again, we'll have to transition through that little awkward section where uh, the two trails have not been connected. As I mentioned, I thought that maybe it's a combination of diff different jurisdictions, municipality jurisdictions. I could be wrong on that, but uh, definitely a, a gap, at least in the paved pathway. But this Brompton is 
all surfaces ready, we can ride on some gravel. As they say, we have the technology, we have the skills, we have the ability, and we have the initiative, so we can do it. And we will. And here we go. So we'll be on this for two miles, uh, back to the 44th Street Metro Station, and we'll get the bike packed up into my travel case and uh, catch the sky train back to the airport terminal get the bike checked in to check luggage it does fit in a normal size suitcase so no additional baggage fees for a uh, small package like this people sometimes ask me if i take my Brompton into carry-on. I have in the past. It is possible. It does fold up small enough that it can fit in the overhead. But it creates so much drama. It's not worth it. I'm fortunate enough to have a free checked bag when I fly. So I just do that. It's the way to do it. Okay, here's our gravel. We have to navigate to the other side over here. Hook back up with the canal path. You can see the well-worn tire tracks from the other bikes. Woohoo! That was fun. All right. Angle our way over here to the pavement. And we need to cross the train tracks again. And you can see our improved pathway structure here, along with the art installations along the way. Yeah, I mean, this is incredibly comfortable. I could totally see living at cul-de-sac and uh, if one needs to travel by air, you know, an easy seven mile ride, 90% of it, oh, 99% of it taking this direction. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot Smith Road. So we'll, we'll stick with 90 instead of 99. 90% of it is on a separated multi-use path. Really, quite extraordinary. Again, cities, municipalities, this is the power that these facilities can have. More than just a recreational facility that goes nowhere is make sure that you have convenient connections to meaningful destinations, including transit stops, including the airport, businesses shopping this is how you get the most bang for your buck a very impressive return on investment creating a culture of activity culture of health a vibrant economy this is how you do it obviously this section could probably be dressed up a bit more, make it a little more inviting. It does need lighting so that it's a truly all ages and abilities facility. It looks like there's some lighting. I think that's what that is, but uh, need some TLC. We're coming up on the area where the homeless encampments are. Maybe this is in response to that, you see that the light poles resume up here on the other side of the uh, underpass. I won't pan over and focus in on the very sad situation that is on display here. And 
again. It's above my pay grade. I'm not sure what all the answers are. It's a multifactorial problem. Once again, here's the metro train yard. So you can see the tracks, the overhead wires, a couple of the trains that are resting, maybe going through some repairs, cleaning, etc. It was nice riding the metro train a little bit yesterday. Very convenient aspect of the cul-de-sac community. And again, that's one of the key features. In fact, it is the key feature of the success of that car light, car free development is the fact that somebody can use transit quite easily. You need to work on the bike infrastructure that's coming hopefully sooner rather than later but as it is with Smith Road being as quiet as it is it's quite comfortable making it to the Tempe marketplace through the parking lot connecting to this trail or the other trail the Rio Salado trail Good stuff. And again, you can see we're making our way past some of these industrial areas. We've got our landscaping business here on the right. Not really sure what these are, but I did see a bunch of stacks of pavers and stone. So I'm assuming it's a landscaping place. I sure hope you have enjoyed this ride to and from the airport. I know these are kind of long. I'm trying to narrate as I go, but sometimes I run out of things to say. So again, hopefully you've enjoyed it. We're not quite there to our station, but we're getting closer. Really nice having this right along the canal. I really can't think of a better way to end my stay here in Tempe, making my way to the Phoenix International Sky Harbor Airport. Here's our other railroad crossing that we need to do. <laughs> Again, you can tell, jurisdictional. <laughs> it's unimproved right there. I don't know if you saw that sign, but they made a point of saying this is private property. <laughs> Okay, fine. We get it, railroad company. It's your property. Pave the damn thing. Don't be jerks. <laughs> it's amazing how difficult to deal with the freight companies are. You can see the freight train right over there. I don't know how it is they became to have such a bad attitude but they did I guess they don't have a real appreciation for just how much they were subsidized in the early years they treat it all as if 
it's their own hard-fought private property when in reality they leveraged a lot of subsidization and a lot of taking advantage of other people's to build out the train network as you can tell I don't have much sympathy for them and their bad attitude but then again most of them are publicly traded firms and uh, I suppose the investors could speak up and have a say on mass I think this is our uh, station yeah here's 44th Street Wait. press the little bake button here that's our destination right over there Again, 44th Street, massive strode. And we see our autonomous vehicle, the Waymo Jaguar there. Couldn't tell if there was somebody in it, whether they're actually getting a ride or not. Eventually, that's the plan. I have not seen any of the Waymos being challenged with the environment here comes another one Let's see if it stops for us it looks like it will hey there waymo well played all right off to our destination i think i stay on this side yeah, I do stay on this side. You can see that the improved section of the trail is on that side, the lighting is on that side, the decorations, art installations, and plantings, landscaping is on that side. We're on this side. There's a bridge that we could use to connect to the improved section over there, but this is our destination right here. So we are on the, we're on the proper side. In we go. Hey, thank you all so much for uh, tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this ride uh, to and from the cul-de-sac development and uh, the transit station here to get to the Sky Harbor International Airport. Uh, thank you so much again for tuning in if you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below and share it with a friend and if you haven't done so already it'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell until next time this is john signing off by wishing you much activity health and happiness cheers and again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.